Praise God. Let's turn our Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. We'll start reading in verse 1. And then we'll skip over to chapter 4 and read a little bit. We'd like to say again, it's good to have everybody. Uh, good to see little Ben and Justin up in here. Good to have y'all and your wives, Brother Ben, Brother Daddy. Amen. Your presence means a lot whenever we're having church. Amen. It, it really does. I don't say that lightly. It's, it's hard to have church and feel like you're ministering to yourself. Amen. Uh, one place of scripture said one had the song, one had the hymn, and uh, uh, it said that you, it's not really what you get out of church, it's what you put into church. Uh, what you put into church helps you, it helps others. I was thinking about Brother Marvin the other night. He was sitting there giving his devotional that inspired him of that day, and Amen. Is encouraging words what he had to say, and different ones that uh, put in to church is what makes church. Uh, these walls and windows and microphones they don't make church. We the people make church, and uh, your presence is appreciated, and uh, it just furthers the gospel. It, it makes things roll. Amen. It's like oil in the engine. Can't live without it. It may run for a little bit, but it's going to start clanging. It's going to burn up. Be a mess. Amen. Let's read here. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1 says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. We're going to talk about some qualities of a soldier of the Lord. Uh, you are a soldier if you are, amen, uh, serving the Lord. In a sense, Paul is referring to Christians, the saints, as soldiers. And uh, I want to be a good soldier. We've got enough bad soldiers. We don't need no more bad soldiers. We need good soldiers. Good soldiers. Amen. Now let's turn to chapter 4 in verse 1. I charge thee, therefore... Before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Now think about that as we're reading this about the qualities of a soldier. <clears throat> Verse 3 For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have, kept the, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. Praise the Lord. Amen. As Paul is nearing the end of his life, all of the thoughts, all of the experience is running through his head. And he is uh, giving some advice to young Timothy. 
of how he should be, how he should act, how he should conduct himself, how he should, uh, you know, go forth in the ministry, giving him some good advice. We all need some good advice from time to time, don't we? Good advice is great if we'll take heed to it and listen to it and apply it to our life. And uh, that is what Paul is trying to get Timothy to do, telling him some things. Do these things and you'll be successful. Uh, follow this pattern here and it'll make the way for you. Uh, we heard a lot about that, uh, in a sense, in our revival this past week. Of, we had some information, didn't we? Amen. About Christian living and, and uh, those sort of things. Amen. I want to take heed to what the Word of God tells us. Praise the Lord. I appreciate the Sunday school lesson this morning. Amen. Uh, Brother Nathan read somewhere along his teaching about walking in the Spirit. Amen. Uh, uh, many of us would wonder how to avoid uh, the tragedy of the spiritual life. Uh, and that is, is to walk in the Spirit. Yeah. I wrote me a note down this morning. Walk in the Spirit yeah. and you shall not fulfill the lust thereof. Walking in the Spirit. Amen. Thinking, I'm going to just tie that right in here with being, you know, the quality of a good soldier. The quality of the saint of God. Amen. Walking in the Spirit. Help me, Jesus. Amen. Anybody say that with me this morning? Help me, Lord, to walk in the Spirit. That I don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And the lust of this world. And things that would beset me and and deter uh, my goal, my aim. Amen. Uh, uh, the enemy, whenever there's war, there is different strategies of the enemy to offset uh, the I, I won't put offset the onset of the other side. Uh, that's what the, the old devil is trying to do to me and you. He's trying to offset our purpose. He's trying to offset our desire. He's trying to offset what we're doing for the Lord. Any, tr any kind of flame that comes up in our life. Uh, it's just I hate to be negative, but it's been my experience that the devil is right there to try to put it out. He, it just seems like it always is. But uh, as we uh, was talking, Brother Jimmy, I'm not giving up. Amen. I'm not giving up. I'm going forward. Amen. I just want the Lord to help us to be good soldiers. Anybody else want to be a good show, soldier with me here this morning? Amen. <clears throat> I want these qualities in my life. So as Paul hears, he's ending his life as he sits in a Roman prison. But from that cell, the apostle took steps to ensure that he would be remembered as a good soldier of the cross. He took time here to write to young Timothy. Uh, of how and that what the secret was to becoming a good soldier. <coughs> Excuse me. Amen. Many, or maybe, I, I don't know, there, there's many of us here this morning. I hope that it's my desire, and I know it is God's, that we all uh, become a good soldier. Praise the Lord. We need to be encouraged. And I hope that these scriptures here this morning will challenge us to become the best soldiers that we can. Amen. To become better than what we are. Amen. Amen. To press toward the mark of the high calling. Praise the Lord which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Uh, one quality I want to look back here in, in the second chapter. In chapter 2 and verse 3, Therefore, Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. There is some following that has to be done. One quality is to be a follower. A follower. To be a follower implies having a relationship with the Lord. There's no way we can follow Him without some kind of confidence in Him. <clears throat> you have to have confidence in the one you're following, right? Right? You have to know that He knows the way. Right. You have to have confidence that He understands the way. Yes. Levi and some of his friends at school went to a, uh, some little birthday party they had with, a, with one of them that was celebrating a birthday and they had some kind of strategy game they was doing, trying to figure out the game. And uh, 
Anyway, Levi had been through it before and he knew how, how to make it through it. And he won the game. I say they did, their group did. And uh, probably the reason that their, their group won the game is because they had somebody with them that had been through it before. Yeah. And Levi was able to take them boys through that game and they all had to have confidence in him because he'd been there before. Using that as an illustration, we know Jesus has been here before, don't we? We know that he has been through the things that we're going through. We know that he understands what we're going through. And therefore, we can have confidence in following him. We'll never be able to be a good soldier unless we have confidence in the one that we're following. Amen. Amen. And I hope that our congregation here this morning would have confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ to follow him all the way. Not just partly, but all the way. Amen. The qualities of a good soldier. To be a follower of the Lord. Amen. I got a few scriptures here I want to look up. You can turn with me to St. John chapter 3 and verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily. What does verily, verily mean? Yes, yeah. I, 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 that, I learned something this week. Y'all did too, didn't you? Hey Amen. That stuck with me. I guarantee you, verily, verily, you, you can lean on it. This is the way it is. Jesus is saying these words. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen. So that, that there's one, one step that we have to take by accomplishing being a follower. It's receiving God. Being born again. Because if we're not born again, Jesus tells us we cannot see the kingdom of God. Being a follower. And as we look at this scripture in verse 3, back in our text scriptures, Timothy 2 and 3, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Being a good soldier of Jesus Christ implies that we are following Jesus Christ. It implies a rank here that there's somebody that's higher than me and you. And that is Christ Himself. We're not at the top. We have somebody to follow. And if we'll follow his commands, uh, it'll make us a successful soldier. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Whenever we refuse to live as the Lord desires, you know what? We, we cross the lines from a follower to a traitor. If a soldier in the United States Army decided that the uh, people that we were fighting over in the third world countries were, their methods were better and we could just cross the lines and join their ranks for a few days, we would be marked as a traitor, wouldn't we? So we have to live as the Lord desires. And he is a follower. Then another thing we read on down in verse 4 says, No man that warth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. He is faithful. He is faithful. Praise the Lord. Verse 7 says, Consider what I say, and the Lord giveth thee understanding in all things. Praise God. I want to be faithful, don't you? Amen. My prayer is, Lord, help me to be more faithful than what I've been. Help me to be more faithful to the things of the Lord. Amen. And be that soldier that I need to be. Praise God. Praise God. His priorities. In verse 4, he talks about no man warth entangled himself with affairs of this life. 
Why? Because he's trying to please the Lord. Amen. He seeks to please his commander. Notice that a good soldier has no higher goal in life than pleasing his superior. The good soldier knows that anything which interferes with his performance in the military must be done away with. A good soldier wants to please his superior and does whatever he has to do to get that job done. Who comes first in your life? What comes first in your life? Whatever or what it is, amen, that could be our God. Come on. We need the Lord Jesus Christ Himself to be first in our life. First and foremost. Uh, oh, amen. I, I need to, amen. I, I want to pull up to these scriptures here for just a moment in my mind, and I hope you do too. Praise God. Help me, Lord, to be a better soldier than what I've been. Amen. That's my cry from my heart. Help me, Lord, to be better than what I have been. Help me to be more faithful, Lord, and help me to be more pleasing. We heard about uh, the, the, the teaching on prayer this morning. And, uh, you know, I know, amen, I, I know in my own life that, that I would probably uh, do a lot better, amen, if I spent more time in prayer, wouldn't you? Amen. 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 We would figure out some things. God would talk to us. God would help us. Praise the Lord. But we're only going to find those things whenever we learn to submit to Him. Amen. Praise God. Pleasing Jesus should be our first priority in life. Pleasing Jesus. Pleasing God. Amen. <clears throat> Back in chapter 4, I'm just going to be kind of flipping back between these two chapters. In verse 7, in the last portion of that verse says, I have kept the faith. It's Paul saying this, I have kept the faith. Yeah. Don't you want to be able to say that whenever your life comes to a close? Amen. I sure do. Hey Amen. I want to be able to say I have kept the faith. Amen. I have kept the faith. And the only way to keep that faith is to fight every day. Praise the Lord. When you come up against a rock in the road. Amen. When you come up against a bump in life. Amen. We've got to fight, church, to get through it. Praise the Lord. We can't give up. Amen. We can't give up. We can't just uh, turn around and let the devil have his way with our life. Amen. I know he's pulling at us. I know he's pulling at us. But I want to tell you what, we have something to fire back at him with. Amen. That's the power of the Spirit, the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Help me, Lord. Amen. To fire back at the enemy. Praise the Lord. With that, that he is uh, uh, installed in me. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm glad for the peace of Jesus. I'm glad for the knowledge of the Lord. Amen. I'm glad that we can trust in whom we have believed. And we can know that He is going to carry us through. Yes. Amen. Amen. I want to be that good soldier. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. His practice. Thinking about this faith, I have kept the faith. The practice, amen, guards the truth. Amen, he guarded the faith in his life. Paul did. A good soldier takes care of the things delivered unto him. He is determined to do a good job, and he refuses to do anything to bring a disgrace and a dishonor upon his superior, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, so it is with me and you as a Christian soldier. Praise God. He wants to live, amen, his life in a manner that brings honor to the Lord and not dishonor. I hate to say I've done many things in my life that no doubt brought dishonor to God. But I don't want to drown myself in that this morning. Amen. I want to turn the tables. Praise God. I want to do those things. I want to learn to give what it takes. Amen. That what I do in life, how I am, what I become, my character honors the Lord. Don't we want to honor Jesus? Praise the Lord. Amen. We're talking about being a good soldier. The qualities of a Christian. The qualities of the saints of God. Amen. Our, our qualities shouldn't be telling dirty jokes and lies and, and having a filthy mouth. And, and you know, that's not the qualities of a Christian. Amen. Uh, you know, we talked about that this past week about the Christian life and those things, amen, 
uh, uh, if we just use some, some common sense sometimes, it'll get us a long ways. Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, a really long ways. You know, we wonder about some things sometimes in our life, you know, it just, uh, it's basically as white versus black. I'm not talking about a human race. I'm talking about colors. Amen. Something can be clean, representing white. Something can be uh, uh, dirty and marred. And, and, and uh, you know, you've got, you got two different, I, I'm not, like I said, I'm not say, talking about race. I'm talking about clean and dirty. Praise the Lord. Whenever we, whenever we clean, amen, ourselves up. Well, amen, we want to be white. We want our soul to be whiter than snow. Amen, we want to be clean, don't we? And we want to be on the right uh, place, the right plane with Jesus Christ. And we want to be on the right standing with the Lord. Amen, that's what the good soldier does. He is out every day to try to please his master. You know what? And if he has failed, what's the best thing for me and you to do? to go to the master and say look I failed I failed forgive me Lord uh, uh, make me clean again amen make me clean again don't we want to live that way yes praise God the qualities of a good soldier he's a follower amen he's a follower he follows the Lord and then he is familiar he becomes familiar with some things you know what? Whenever you handle and taste the word of the Lord, you become feel familiar with those scriptures like we was talking about at the breakfast table this morning, Brother Jimmy. And you become familiar with God's word and what it says. Amen. The more you read it, the more you study it, you become familiar with it. It's just like your job, whatever job you do, you, you after doing it uh, after a while, you become familiar with what you're doing, right? You become to know better uh, than the first day on the job you didn't understand and you had uh, someone else having to show you what to do and what this part represents and that part and what you can do to put it together and how things work and you know, but after a month or two down the road, you become more and more familiar with your job. Then after a year down the road, you become even more familiar. Amen. And after a while, you get it down and you understand some things. You're familiar with what you're doing. You know, our world many times has used the excuse that, you know, I just can't understand the word of God. You know, the reason we don't understand is we don't study it. We don't read it. That, that's the bottom line. And the, the, uh, the Bible was written, I forget what they say, somewhere on the level of a fourth to fifth grade education. Are we saying we can't understand fourth and fifth grade grammar? No, that's just an excuse. We would know God's word if we handled it. If we tasted it. You know, we can't expect to just read a few lines or follow along on Sunday morning sermon preaching and to know the word of the Lord. Amen. But whenever we, uh, that's what I like about Brother Marvin's testimony, he's talking about in his devotion. You know what that let me know? He was handling the word of God during his Monday and Tuesday and when there wasn't no church going on. Amen. That's how we learn. That's how we become more familiar with the things. That's how we're going to be familiar with the tactics of our enemy and the tactics of, uh, of Satan that tries to destroy our soul whenever we learn of God and we learn of, of God's ways and we apply them to our life. We become familiar. That, that's a quality of a good soldier. He's familiar with the sound of the commander's voice. Let's go back to John, St. John chapter 10 and verse 3 says to him, the porter openeth and the sheep hear his voice and he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. How did them sheep get to know his voice? Uh, amen. He was with the sheep and the sheep was with him. They become familiar with each other. You know, God 
is familiar with your cry. He's familiar with not groan. He's familiar with me when I go down to prayer. Amen. And I'm in agony in prayer. He knows my voice. He knows my voice. He knows your voice. He knows when we cry out to him. Amen. And my friend, you can know his voice. We can know when the Lord speaks to us. Amen. I need him to speak to me. How about you? Amen. Amen. Verse 4 says, And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep followeth him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow. Listen to that. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Praise God. What a quality. That, that speaks volumes, doesn't it? Amen. We don't need to be following the strangers of this world. We need to stick with following Jesus. Following that familiar voice. And the only way we're going to get familiar with his voice is to spend more time with him. Amen. Spend more time with him. With him. I praise God. He is familiar with using his weapons. Familiar with the skill. I'm not going to take all the time to read all this. I'm not going to try to be linked with you this morning. Ephesians chapter 6. You can read that. It talks about the, uh, the weaponry, the, the armor that the Christian should have. Uh, you know, put on those things. Let's put on those things. Amen. And there'll be weapons for us. Praise the Lord. He is familiar with the strategy of the enemy. We can learn what the enemy does. <clears throat> we can learn from our past mistakes. We are familiar with what the devil's doing. He's familiar with his friends also. A good soldier not only worries about his own welfare, but the welfare of others around him. When he's seeing when a person that's a good soldier sees his brother falling, he don't peck him to death. He lets him know that he's praying for him. Wraps his arms around him. Amen. Supports him. Praise God. Amen. A good soldier is a fighter. He is determined. A good soldier, he don't retreat in the face of the enemy. He don't run and hide. Amen. But he fights instead. He stands his ground and fights the battle until the battle is over. Are we willing this morning to fight the battle until it's over? Let's don't give up. Amen. Let's don't give in. Praise God. That good soldier is driven. What is driving us? Amen. That power of the Spirit is what's driving us. Amen. Knowing that, that we have eternity to look forward to <coughs> in heaven. Amen. should be a drive for us. Praise the Lord. And to know that God is good. He's good in my life here on this earth. He's just not somebody that's going to be good to me when I die. But God is good here right now this morning, isn't He? Praise the Lord. Good soldier is dedicated. Dedicated. He is consistent. Come on, the piano, Sister Kim. A good soldier is dedicated. Are we willing to be dedicated this morning? Dedicated. I'm afraid that's where we fall off the bandwagon many times is our dedication. Dedication. 